Pokemon, Call of Duty, Diablo Immortal, Raid Shadow Legends. These are just some of the hundreds of games that are run by scammers effectively <laughs> trying to bankrupt you. All right. We're going to expose them for who they are. Whoa. Three weeks ago, I saw- Here we go. Okay, everybody. Hi, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw. I've been told by so many people to react to this video. I have not seen it yet. I understand that there are a lot of complaints about Pokemon Unite inside of it and mobile games. So I'm going to give my fair- unbiased as much as I can take on this and just as a real quick rundown of who I am if you don't know who I am I primarily make content around this game Pokemon Unite as you can see I have Pokemon stuff behind me I'm pretty dang invested in this game but I am going to try to give you uh, my complete honest take about whatever criticisms are brought up in this video. I don't know this person, but he's got a massive YouTube channel. I assume he makes very good content and people like it a lot. And I have no plans of saying anything negative about him or anything like that. I just, uh, I'm going to take a look at this and give my fair assessment as best I can. I started playing the incredibly popular mobile game, Pokemon Unite. It seems simple. You're in one team of Pokemon and your goal is to head to the other side of the map and score goals against the other team of Pokemon. It's completely Ooh, free to play and over a hundred million people have downloaded the game. But... I'd only just finished the tutorial by the time I was slapped with a full page ad to spend $10 on something called the Unite membership. No way, I thought. So, I closed that tab and carried on playing. No. This is uh, this is something true about a lot of mobile games. It, it can be really frustrating. They try to get you to uh, pay money all the time. Obviously, a free-to-play game, they're looking to make money. The idea isn't that they made an entire game for you to spend zero dollars. They want some people to spend a lot of money. Realizing at this point that this was all part of a bigger plan to rinse me of everything that I owe. It took just six more minutes of playtime before I was greeted with this. See, the game gives you a login bonus every single day that you come back to the game and play. But this pass effectively gives you bonuses on top of that bonus, which actually seemed pretty reasonable for the 60 EOS gems that it cost me, which equates to about $1 in real money. So I bought it. One of the first times I've ever spent money on a free game. And I felt alive. Kind of like how you feel when you manage to nab one of those Amazon lightning deals just before they run out. After the first couple of days though, I started to notice that while I was getting plenty of new stuff and constant level ups, and I had been given four different Pokemon to play with, I started losing. Like, a lot. I started to realize that this game was less about skill on the battlefield. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm not trying to be mean when I say this. Um, the the Probably the reason that this player has started losing is because he started playing real players. When you start playing this game, they're throwing you into tutorial matches against uh, bots. They're essentially teaching you the fundamentals of the game, and you're not actually playing against real people. So I could be wrong, but that's essentially what he's talking about, is he started playing against real players and started losing. The combat is effectively just mashing your different attacks as soon as they become ready to use. It's more about how strong you make your Pokemon before you step foot on the battlefield. The, uh, no, this couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, wow. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, no, it's not about mashing your attacks. and has no, It has uh, almost 99.9% .9 everything to do with what happens inside of a game, not what happens outside of a game. So... I decided that I needed some held items. One held items are what items. you equip to your Pokemon to give them improved stats. So I headed to the shop and I spent about half of the total in-game EOS coins I'd earned so far buying three items. One that increases my maximum health, one that gives me health regeneration, and one that increases my damage output. And I thought, finally, my Pokemon is kitted out. I don't have to think about this anymore. I can just play the game. So I charged into battle with my head held high and I got absolutely demolished. It became very clear to me at this point that it wasn't just enough to buy the held items. Because when you first get one, they're almost completely useless. Like this attack increasing scope lens that I bought, it was literally giving me a 0.4% extra chance of getting a critical hit that dealt more damage. The system he's talking about inside this game for people who are unaware and maybe watching all this for the first time is a system called held items. You get to pick three for any Pokemon that you bring into the game. They have various effects and and they do get better as you level them up outside of the game. Uh, they have kind of a threshold at level 10 and level 20 that make them better than they are when you first get them. So it's true that when you first get an item, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but especially early on in the game, it has a negligible effect on whether or not you are winning inside this game. Even as you get further and further into the game, level 20 is essentially the highest you would need to get any item ever. And the game actually gives you 
free opportunities to get items up to the max level. So it's a system to make your items a little stronger throughout the game, but they're not um, they're not a mechanic that's going to change anything. Moist Critical actually had a very similar video to this right when the game came out. And I think part of uh, the reason that you might think they're super powerful is because the game doesn't do an amazing job of explaining the stats inside things. So this isn't really on this creator at all. It's just the game doesn't tell you that much in this respect. Adding 0.4% to your dinner one evening, you get one extra P. In order to become competitive in ranked matches, you actually need to level your items up all the way to grade 30. This is not true. Uh, you should level your items up to level 20. That's, I mean, that's where you should get your items because they get these uh, large sort of uh, bonuses to the reason you use the item. So if you have an item, uh, for instance, uh, he showed this item earlier, the assault vest. If you have this item, it gives you a small shield around you every few seconds equal to a percentage of your health. And at level 10 and level 20, that gets bigger. After level 20, it's just sort of a flat stat bonus that is almost irrelevant in the game. You don't need to level anything to level 30. At which point they will give you a big game-changing buff, like let's say 15% more damage. That's, no, that's not even close. Nothing does anything close to that. That would be truly crazy and game-breaking. This isn't, um, I don't know if, the, uh, I, you know what I think this is? I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to say it's just that the game provides a lack of information. However, this is not even close to accurate. I would say that you couldn't be further from the truth here. Because the percentage might be closer to one. But the problem is, leveling up your items is a ridiculous process. You can't earn levels with skillful play, you have to buy them with something called item enhancers. But then, these item enhancers are so unbelievably slow to earn through any organic means, that I was practically forced to make my second purchase. <laughs> they forced him against his will, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm not being, in, I'm trying to be as fair as I can. He's not being forced to make any purchases inside this game. You do get a lot of item enhancers, and in fact the game gives you three free level 30 items just as you play. The Battle Pass. This game, and almost every other mobile game like it, uses Battle Passes as a way to guilt their players into paying more money. I don't think they use them as a way to guilt players into paying more money, and I don't want to just be argumentative, but the, these games are, they have a few ways that they monetize the players in the game, and Battle Passes is one of the biggest ways that they monetize. Uh, in Unite, basically, the Battle Pass, it's really there for cosmetics. You just get a, a really nice, uh, what in the game they call Hollowware, a skin for your Pokemon every season. Every time you complete a game, it'll tell you the rewards you earned, and then the rewards that you could have earned on top of that if only you bought the Battle Pass, which is just this whole extra stream of rewards to keep playing and keep coming back to the game. And in this case, a lot of those rewards just so happened to be what I was looking for. Item enhancers. This was $10 in real money. I bought it, because the alternative option was to sign away weeks of my life grinding for it, but I was becoming very aware at this point that I'd already spent more on this game than I had in any mobile game I'd ever played before. Still, at least now when I was playing, I could guarantee myself a steady supply of new item enhancers so I could remain a competitive battler. This is interesting to to hear this perspective because that's actually not what was interested uh, what was interesting to me about the battle pass when I first started playing these games whenever I play a mobile game or a free to play game if I really like it I often get the battle pass and usually for me personally it's just about cosmetics I, I think the cosmetics are cool and when I like a game I think ah it's like 10 bucks every other month or so for a battle pass if I like it I'll support it that way but I do understand uh, especially you log into some games and it feels like your the rewards you earn not having the battle pass and the rewards you earn from the battle pass feel so uh disconnected that yeah I, I i understand the feeling here and that's about where you'd expect the story to end right wrong because right when i thought that i just paid my way out of my problems is actually when things took the biggest dive so far because it's at this point that i realized just how many of these item enhancers i was going to need see when you're upgrading your this is similar to Moist Critical's video when the game first came out. I I understand where they're coming from here. They're wrong about the effects of these item enhancers, but the game doesn't do a good job of explaining this, so I understand why people get upset by this. Items, all you can see is how many item enhancers it costs to go from the level you're on to the next level. And so when I saw that all of my level one items just needed three item enhancers to level up, and then I saw that with this battle pass, I could get myself a bundle of 30 item enhancers every few days of playing, I thought that this $10 would easily cover me. 
Thank you. But what the game didn't tell me was that every single level you go up with your held items, the more item enhancers you need to get to the one after that. So that actually, to get my three held items to level 30, it wasn't that I needed 100 or 200 of them. Yeah, you knew I like actually needed no less thousands. than 7,761. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I realized this, my jaw practically hit the floor. To put that number Did into it. some perspective. Uh, so, uh, yes, to get to level 30 on held items, you need a ton of item enhancers. This, again, I, I blame the game uh, partially for this because it doesn't really let you know that level 30 items are not that relevant. It feels like sort of an end game grind and it's for the most minuscule stat bonus possible. I think to get a level 20 held item, uh, I think you need Maybe it's five or six hundred, or maybe it's closer to eight hundred or something like that. It comes pretty fast just by playing the game a couple days. And again, if he wants to get three items to level 30, they literally give you that for free by playing. In the entire base game of Pokemon Unite, the maximum amount of item enhancers you can possibly earn without getting into the whole loot box opening system is 1,535. If I completely maxed out my battle pass, this isn't correct. That's not uh, accurate. I don't know where he got that number. But they give you item, they give you stuff all the time for play. Like it, this game constantly throws things at you for playing. Um, maybe he just played it for a week or something like that and thought that's all there is. But you get this stuff constantly. Which is already something that I've paid for. On top of that, I could bag myself an extra 360. But I mean, not only would this process take me roughly 150 days of playing every single day to earn, but even with that. It doesn't though. They give you three for free. I would... <laughs> Literally, I, I actually, I'm not trying to say his point is completely invalid. It's not. It, there is a system for leveling items inside this game, but he's talking about leveling three items to level 30. They literally give you that for free. They just give them to you. They're called super item enhancers. You get three of them for free. Level 30 items. And if you've already put item enhancers into that item, it refunds you everything you've already put in. We'd still need to find a way to get the remaining 5,866 item enhancers that I still needed. And that's when you have almost no option but to turn to the shop. How much do you think this was going to cost me? A simple, almost required mobile game in app purchase. This is the same as what happened with Moist Critical. It costs like 100 bucks. It's $100. Yeah. 100 real money dollars and if you wanted to max let by the way for anyone who doesn't know about pokemon unite do not do this you do not need to do this don't do this uh i understand that it sounds like this person and moist from when the game first came out i'm just calling him moist i don't, I don't know these people but oh my buddy moist uh but no you don't need to do this and uh the game could explain that better but yeah, you you can do this. It's not, it doesn't make sense, but you can do this. Tell all of your items, not just the three that you currently have equipped, $760. Are you kidding me? No, God, please, no! You could probably fly out to Japan, go to the actual Pokemon Center, and buy yourself a real Pikachu for that price. But the scary part of it is that at this point, what choice that I have? You don't need to do that. Please don't do this. You have... You don't need to do this. It has nothing to do with you winning. I poured so much time and love into my account that I didn't feel like it was an option to just stop playing. It was either I pay $100 or I accept that I will be disproportionately disadvantaged in every future game that I ever want to play. This is... It, it feels like that, I think, because of a lack of information. But no, this isn't right at all. Don't spend that much money. Also, the reason... No offense to this person, but I understand it. The reason this person spent this money on this game is because this person clearly has a lot of money. I decided to go for it, which I know is probably the single most pointless purchase I've made in my entire life. And I have made a lot of pointless purchases over the years, but <laughs> I wanted to give you guys a real experience. I wanted to know and to be able to show you what would happen next. And sure enough, somehow it managed to get even worse. Because then, only at this point, only $100 into this supposedly free mobile game, did I find... Uh, and... I, I hate to do this, but we all know that these games are trying to make money, right? They don't literally make a free video game. And they're like, just go buy, go play it for free. They, they, okay. Doubt how Pokemon Unite makes its big money. So we've established at this point that EOS gems are the premium currency that you can use to buy almost anything in the game. But it's not the only They make their big money also have EOS coins, Pokemon skins, which can buy most like. of the things at gems cam, but you need a lot of them. Next we have tickets, which come in three flavors. EOS tickets, fashion tickets, and holo tickets. Fashion and holo tickets unlock new skins for your trainer and Pokemon of choice. Mm -hmm. While EOS tickets let you buy those item enhancers, as well as boost cards that increase the amount of experience points you earn. Yeah. Tickets, like coins, can be earned in events and challenges, but when those run dry, you do need to buy them with gems. Are you keeping up? 
Because then on top of that, you have AOS and... This is a super valid complaint about any mobile game, too. It's just so many forms of currency. Just so many, like, how many tickets do I need for the coliseum so that i yeah this is, Energy, which is every game has so much so many of these things rewards, but it's gradually totally valid do so. I, I, I don't know the limited time cake currency for the ongoing anniversary cake challenge on top of that if you hadn't already guessed after two weeks of playing this game my head was spinning the game is so unbelievably confusing to the point of being stressful and i was about to find out that it is intentionally designed that way you know what actually i'm i'm uh i i kind of laugh at this and scoff but i really i really want to give this person the benefit of the doubt because um i don't know them and i, I don't want to believe that they're being unfair about any of this uh i'm i'm in, i'm i find it really interesting that they find this game unbelievably confusing because it's probably the most friendly version of a game like this is a MOBA that I believe has ever been on the market. I also mentioned that I worked out if I actually wanted to continue to play the game competitively with full access to all the characters I wanted to use with a nice selection of outfits for them and enough energy that I would continue to get rewards for doing so, this game was going to cost me at the very least another $1,200 over the next six months. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, dude. So I put the game down, I grabbed my laptop, and I started digging. And this is where I understood how much I was about to be manipulated. For what? And how widespread these developers, who are effectively scammers, have actually become. So it all starts with the first spend. And this isn't a term that I've invented. This is a term that's actually oh, he's being gonna used show this by conference. developers. Yeah. This is Torof Jönström, CEO of the mobile game company. Tri yeah, this is, uh, this is something that uh, is very popular. It's just, uh, this is a clip about monetization. They kind of show how these games work, how they essentially get their hooks in you. They get you to buy, they get you invested. It's hard to get away from them. It's an interesting system. I actually don't love free to play games personally. My favorite kind of games are the game uh, where you buy a game for 60 bucks or whatever. It comes with everything included. Included, but clearly the you know the model the business model for games has changed dramatically even when you buy some $60 game there's you know the uh, DLC for it and there's the season pass and there's all this so there's just a lot of ways that games are trying to make money now monetization strategies for mobile and mobile games, games are some of the spend, worst the worst the ice, then they think of themselves as spenders in the game it's okay for me to spend in the game and what he's teaching these other developers is that 98 percent of players when they first start playing a free mobile game will go into it under the premise that they won't be making any in-app purchases i was one of them most likely you're one of them too but the second that these games can get you to lay down your first dollar they've effectively broken your barrier. I mean, your willingness to then make further payments will skyrocket. So you need to break the wall first. In hindsight, this, this is so true. Yeah, and this is like. what he talks about, this login bonus. This is all 100% correct. This is what uh, mobile games do. They want you to spend a buck. You know when you log into any game, it's like, give us $2 and you get all this stuff. This is uh, this is the business practice. Gave me that yeah. super cheap login bonus just six minutes after I started playing. They don't care about a dollar. They just wanted to crack me, to turn me from a free player into a spender. They also do care about a dollar. To be fair, if the game had 100 million downloads and everyone spent a dollar, they care about a dollar. And <laughs> but I yes. only realized this after watching this developer talk about it, but the way that the game manipulated me into buying it was through the anchoring technique. By first presenting me with an expensive in-app purchase that they actually knew that I wouldn't buy, that Unite membership, they set my expectations that $10 is about what a set of prizes is worth in this game, which meant that when they then swooped in with that $1 deal to get the login bonus pass, I would have felt foolish for turning it down. This is all true, and it's also interesting that they recently added the membership to the game. Um, so that wasn't there for a while, but this is all true about how they psychologically get people to spend money in free-to-play games. Because of the comparative value, I got played. But I realized that the reason I cared so much about this purchase, and the reason that so many people pour so much cash into these games, is based on another simple human facet that's being exploited. We like to be better than our peers. It's baked into our very DNA that our survival depends on having a competitive advantage versus the people around us. And so, pit wealthy players against each other at something, allow each of them to be able to pay for that competitive advantage, and the only party that really wins is the game developer who's charging them. You can see this technique in all the most popular games. Like just recently, Diablo Immortal, where- To compare Pokemon Unite to Diablo Immortal is crazy. You will get completely sliced apart by the players who have spent big money, who are called whales in the industry. Mind you in, in game, inside of a match of Pokemon Unite, the money you've spent outside of a match of Pokemon Unite is so irrelevant. Um, I don't know if this person doesn't know that, but it's very possible they don't. That's the gambling industry we're talking about. 
says something about this. If you're trying to be a free player in Diablo Immortal, you're effectively a side character to these whales. And your best chance of winning is just to stick by their side and to support them. And this is by design. It gives that to This isn't true about Unite, but I have heard this about Diablo. Uh, to be fair, I haven't played Diablo Immortal, but I've seen I've heard this about Diablo. Feeling that keeps them coming back to spend even more. And sadly, even if you'll never be one of these whale players, you're still unknowingly fueling the system. Being able to tear you apart with ease, it makes you the thrill that the whales keep paying for. That is not rele relevant to this game. Uh, that's not how it works inside of a match of Pokemon Unite. And this is where I really start to hate this. If it was as simple as you pay a load of money and then you just win from now on, that would be too kind. That would mean that the devs would miss out on making any further money from the whales. So they found a way around that too. What these games do now is when you pay to make yourself significantly stronger, they'll let you have your first few satisfying wins with noticeably weaker players to stimulate that reward mechanism and for you to associate that purchase with a positive feeling. But once that's over, we'll soon start pitting you against other players who've also spent large sums of money in the game. Thus, always creating this feeling that no matter how much you've already paid, you're always one purchase away from being content, from being better than your peers, but never actually getting there because there will always be people willing to spend even more than you. This is why I felt- This is not accurate about the way Pokemon Unite works. Now, as far as pitting, it might he may have been pitted against bots inside of matches, but it's not accurate that you buy something in Pokemon Unite and there's any clear indication that they pit you against bad players so that your purchase feels worthwhile. There doesn't seem to be any, that doesn't seem to be true. Uh, if so, there's been no evidence of that at all. Felt like no matter how much I was spending in Pokemon Unite, I still kept losing. And I mean, Diablo Immortal is even worse. You know how like it's quite a big deal to pay- By the way, I, and I'm not trying to be a jerk, again, the reason he's losing is because he doesn't know how to play a MOBA. MOBAs are actually kind of tough games, and it took me a long time to figure it out when I first started playing MOBAs a long time ago. They're pretty tough. Uh, so I, he's not losing because he's not buying things. He's losing because he doesn't know how to play this game. They can be tough pay $10 for an in-game purchase. You know how like, I was absolutely appalled that you had to spend a thousand in Pokemon Unite? Well, in this game, it can cost you $100,000 to max out your character. $100,000 to actually escape this feeling of constantly just needing a little bit more power. And that's just until they release an update that increases that cap. So, I've made my first purchase. I'm already feeling the social pressure of wanting to be better than other people. That's just step one of the hook habit hobby model that's starting to become the playbook for a top grossing game. Because to make the real money off me, they also have to make sure that their game becomes a habit. And uh, according to this guy, the best way to do that is to give me rapid progression to start with, to make sure that the first few levels are incredibly quick, the first few unlocks are incredibly cheap, and the first few enemies incredibly easy. This stimulates the reward centers in players' brains. The same reward centers that give you a rush every time you pass an exam at school or every time you get a pay rise at work. This all makes total sense yeah um they also are putting you against weak play they're putting you against bots because you don't understand how to play the game at first it's different from a lot of games but this is true about all these games progression feels fast uh up top and then slower uh luckily in pokemon unite the progression outside of a match of pokemon unite is almost r irrelevant to a game of pokemon unite and it does it in such a way that your brain will start to crave it. By the way, just as an example, I, while this is on the top of my head, the best team in the world, if, if you think it's pay to win or something like that, the best team in the world beat everyone at the world championships. They did, an ama they, they did it pretty handily. There's no pay to win advantage right there. It's not... It's not like they paid more money or something to be there. There's skill involved in this game that you'll want to play these games as a regular part of your day because the progression you're getting gives you more instant gratification than probably any other part of your life will. And this is why you barely can find a game now that doesn't have a battle pass baked inside of it. It's less about the $10 it might cost you per season, it's more about trying to form a habit inside of you. At the point where you've paid real cash to get extra rewards every day, who's going to not log in and claim them? And at the point where they do that, 
why not just play a couple of games too? Now it makes sense why Pokemon Unite was so keen to get me to buy the Battle Pass, because as soon as I did, it makes the most efficient way to play the game from now on to log in a minimum of once per day. Some games like Diablo, they go even Yeah, they want you to play every day. Offering login bonuses that start tiny, but get bigger and bigger over time, so long as you log in every day. To the point where you'll actually be scared to miss a day because you'll lose so much progress on this bonus ladder. But it's the hobby part of Hook Habit Hobby that's the most dangerous. Because once that habit is formed, and you've already spent vast amounts of time and money progressing your character, this is kind of like where I am with Pokemon Unite right now, these companies know you're not going anywhere. They have your complete, undivided attention, and that's when they start to change the way that they carry on earning from you. Away from traditional power. This is interesting because I feel like games, even outside of mobile games, it does feel like this. When you get into, like, really into a game, you're in it, and it's kind of your game. Um, but yeah, they all, they of course want players to be playing them every day. They have tons of bone. Every single game, like free to play game has tons of reasons to log in daily. Ups, because you've already spent hundreds or thousands making your character stronger and more on convenience. I find this so horrible, but effectively by slowing down your natural progression with the sole purpose of trying to sell you ways to speed it up again, like experience point multi. <sighs> Ah, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I actually, I just, I'm starting to think that this is just very, maybe not very well researched uh, in this particular game. That's, uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to really be fair and not be disparaging because I don't know this person, but I don't think they know that much about what they're talking about in this sense. All the things they're talking about, like the unlocks are showing right here. This stuff happens so fast, as he was mentioning before. And they honestly are progressing you into understanding how to play a game like this. And you don't need to pay anything to progress. You, you don't need to pay anything to progress here. Supplies. Making it so that I now have to pay to get that same high stimulation, fast progression feeling that I used to get when I first started playing the game for free. Not a dissimilar strategy to drug dealers, I should point out, who effectively build their businesses by handing out freebies to get clients addicted with the hope that they then become dependent and are willing to pay to keep that high going. It sounds stupid, but at this point in the player journey, most will pay real money to earn even, let's just say, a bonus 10% experience points. And it's all driven by something called the IQ. IKEA effect. I should elaborate. See, it's a pretty well regarded fact that IKEA furniture is not the best quality, but because it comes in pieces and you have to assemble it yourself, that effort that you've put in makes you value it so much more. And in Ooh, that's cool. Way, I didn't know developers that. Developers know that even if you realize that their game is not the most balanced, consumer friendly, fair service out there, once you've spent weeks building up your character and putting in the work to make them right for you, your attachment is so high that you'll be willing to go to great lengths to keep the fun alive. But then we've got the question of value. We've established at this point why someone might want to make an in-game purchase, but what is it that's moving that needle that's pushing them to want to spend extortionate amounts of money? Well, in a large part, it's because they don't realize how much they're spending, thanks to a tactic known as material distortion. Yeah, this is why games have tons of different currencies in them, so you kind of forget how much you've put into the game. The idea of creating a layer between the in-game money that you're spending and the real-world value of what that's costing you. And I realized, my god, this is so real. Like, when I wanted to upgrade my items in Pokemon, I had to first buy item enhancers to do that. But then, it's not like I could just pay dollars to buy those item you enhancers. You have to use tickets. I had to use EOS tickets. And then, when I wanted to buy EOS tickets, I had to use EOS gems. Or, to put it another way, I had to convert my currency three times to be able to actually do what I wanted with it. This is true, and also, please, you don't need to do this in this game. This is borderline criminal. Because not only has it started well, to feel like it's not okay. real money being spent, but I've also got no idea how much each purchase is actually worth anymore. Not to mention the fact that you can almost never purchase the exact amount of gems you need, meaning that A, you spend more than you need to, and B, you will always have leftover gems in your wallet that can't be exchanged back for cash, which is just going to encourage you to make your next purchase by topping up just a bit. Everything more. he's saying and about mobile games and whole, the way they monetize them, it, it, he's 100% right. It's, uh, it's, it's it's a it's a cycle and they try to they try to get you in it. This yeah. game doesn't have a single mention 
of the word Mi Mobile's not they even right. The like, they do this boxes, with a lot of games. Prize boxes. They never use the word buy. It's always obtain. They don't even use the word shop. It's an emporium here. It genuinely reminds me of those killer clowns that you used to see on the internet. They have the most child appealing, innocent facade, but just beneath that thin veil, they're pure evil. Imagine if there was like a high street shop that tried to pull the stunt, that yeah. made you exchange your cash into tokens as you walked in that could only be spent in that shop. They wouldn't get away with it. Neither should these guys. Oh yeah, and if we say that material distortion makes you pay two to three times what you otherwise would have for in-game items, then reward randomization, which all of these top games are now using, was gonna bring that Yeah, up some sort of gotcha hearts. system or something. A lot of games have, uh, it's random which skin you get or something like that. Pokemon Unite only has that for one system. Um, but it is a, a frustrating thing. This is Call of Duty Mobile. It's actually one of my favorite mobile games from a gameplay perspective. But check this out. A lot of the rarest and the most desirable items in the game are locked behind loot boxes. Like, for example, I really, really want this gun they've got in the middle. By the way, this isn't true about Pokemon Unite. To get any Pokemon item or anything you want in that respect, none of them are locked behind any type of random loot boxes. There's a system inside the game to customize some of your Pokemon with things called boost emblems. Uh, and those emblems are kind of sort of generic. They feel like League of Legends runes, if you remember something like that, but even more tuned down, I would say. But there isn't any system to stop you from playing any particular Pokemon or anything you would want using a loot box. It's designed so that when it kills people, it turns them into a shadow. That will win me so much social validation. And it costs 30 premium coins to have a spin. It's about 50 cents in value. So I head onto the store, I buy myself 420 coins. That should be enough to have 14 runs of this. I'll definitely get that gun. But then I lose the first one and I realize, huh? The price just went up and it's going to keep going up every single time I attempt it from 30 to 40 to 120 to 300 and beyond. It's making me feel like I'm so close to getting it every single time. Like the pointer will literally sit above and then just slip past the gun I really want. It will also one by one put a received marker over everything I have unlocked so far, reminding me of how far I've come and encouraging me to finish it and get everything that the loot box could possibly contain. Again, he's a thousand percent right about all this. This is not also uh, just to say something kind. I think his video you really high quality. I I totally understand why people check this stuff out. This guy's very good. The roulette wheel, like it appears. Each item does not have the same chance of coming up. But in actuality, the real chance of getting this gun, it starts at literally 0.08%. And it goes up by just 0.01% each time wow. until you've received That's rough. every other item in the box. 0.08%. That is, that is disgusting. You yeah, will, you that's will almost a, that's, definitely pay I, I don't like at that least one hundred dollars for this gun. That is multiple times more than almost any player would have even considered had it just been priced like a normal product in a shop. So all of this explains how these games are able to make, frankly, extortionate amounts of spending seem reasonable. The only thing left is how they create the sense of urgency for those purchases. And the way they do this is simply by overloading the player. Do you remember how Pokemon Unite has no less than seven different currencies? And how I was completely and utterly overwhelmed by- Just as a funny aside, almost all of these are kind of useless. <laughs> <laughs> in the game. All the interlocking systems that came as It is dumb that they, I don't get it. I'm like, why do I have fashion have tickets? Who cares? have the exact same game where everything was bought and sold with just the simple EOS coins. The only reason that we had to have seven currencies is to create multiple separate in-game economies in which you don't just have to be rich in one of them, but all of them to actually succeed. That's not true of Unite. And it's a system that you can't actually beat. In fact, none, you don't need to be rich in any currency in Unite to succeed. Because the more resources that you spend on one currency, the more you find that another one becomes your bottleneck. Most games do this through energy. Pokemon Unite has it. And to be honest, the game Raid Shadow Legend system is even more egregious. Where every single time you choose to play, you're spending not just your time... Pokemon Unite doesn't do this. They don't have a system inside of it where you ha you only can play so many matches. They don't do anything like this. Or you have to refill your stamina or your energy for the day. They don't do anything like this. But also this virtual energy currency, which you can either wait for stupid amounts of time to recharge on its own or pay to refill your tank. So just to be very clear, you have to not just pay to buy your items and level up your character and get your car. You don't need to do that in Unite. You don't need to pay to buy items. Uh, you'll earn them throughout the game pretty fast, and you don't need to pay to level up your character. Costumes, but also you do pay for costumes. 
that's supposed to be free. And, and you don't pay to play. At the same time as feeling like you have to spend in every single direction at once, you're also given the feeling that you have to do so quickly. No joke, 90% of purchases you'll be shown in these games, they're all somehow just about to expire. You see timers everywhere, always counting down. True. There's no reason why this Pokemon costume should need to expire. It's not like the Pokemon company is going to run out of virtual materials to make them. It's literally just to instill you with a sense of fear that if you look away, if you so much as put the game down for too long, you might just miss your dream item forever. Totally true. They want you to keep playing and the game and I, the uh, I want I want that this you know skin you for Cinderace. Totally true. The way true. that it handles the Pokemon themselves. You unlock access to cool new Pokemon just by playing, which is great. You even get rare and fancy outfits for them. But they're temporary. Unless you pay to keep them, the game takes the stuff it's given to you away from you. And this taps into the very fundamental loss aversion that all humans have. We are biologically coded to disproportionately value something that we own, such that the idea of losing it would cause us more pain than the happiness we would get from obtaining it if we didn't have it. And these gaming companies are now using this to replace just having a shop that you can casually browse at your own leisure for instead allowing you to feel like the thing is yours first and then charging you to not snatch it away from you. Take it a test drive, huh? Okay. It, what I realized from from three weeks of playing one of these games, as well as digging into why these companies are doing what they're doing, is that the more addicted you become to the game, the more profitable the company is going to be. The success in this industry, it's not- That's, the, I, I mean, the more you end up playing the game and spending money on it, the more money they make. That's obvious, No right? longer defined by review scores or player satisfaction, it's defined by how effectively a developer is able to convert an innocent player who just wants to enjoy what they think is a free game into someone who possesses all the traits of a severe gambling addiction. I wish I could be the bearer of good news, but the truth of it is, these shady practices are getting more and more sophisticated as time goes on. They're starting to spread from mobile games to console games, and we've even just started seeing the effects that it's having on the next generation of players, spawning all sorts of impulse control disorders. So, be aware of games that try to milk you for your money. And feel free to subscribe to the channel and share this video if you found it useful. Okay, so let me give some of my final thoughts on this. I know this is a bit of a long video, but I wanted to give it a fair shake. I wanted to watch the whole thing. Again, I think uh, this dude makes good videos. I really... I'm really impressed by it. It's no surprise that he has a lot of followers and people like his stuff. I will say that there are multiple things in this video that are... Uh, to be kind to this person he is just either incredibly misinformed or hasn't fully looked into it and he is unaware of how this video game works but that doesn't mean that a lot of his criticism about mobile games and some of his criticism about pokemon unite aren't completely valid i don't want to just say this idiot doesn't know get good loser hey loser get good don't you realize you're playing charizard wrong um but i i think one thing uh, that's for sure is Pokemon Unite doesn't do an amazing job of giving you clear indications of what something does and how it will affect your Pokemon. That's why this video exists. That's why the video about uh, from Moist Critical when Pokemon Unite first came out uh, exists. It's because Pokemon Unite doesn't tell you enough inside the game to make people understand how, for instance, irrelevant it would be to re upgrade an item to level 30 by paying $100. You don't need to do something like that. It is not going to change how you do inside the game by really any measurable degree. And again, if you are playing Pokemon Unite for the first time, maybe you are seeing this video because you watched uh, the video here and you're seeing me for the first time. You don't need to do this. They give you free item enhancers that will level your item up to 30 if that's what you want. So uh, don't spend money doing this. Uh, I understand how it could be confusing. I think another thing that he talks about in this video that is just plain wrong is uh that he started losing because he wasn't paying money the truth is is he started losing because he doesn't know how to play this type of video game and it's actually pretty tough so uh learning to play a moba is very different from learning to play a lot of other types of games you have to be more you can't just in fact, it's so funny that he says you have to mash your buttons and just mash your moves. That is exactly why he is losing at this game, but I understand that it might feel like that's how you need to play it. So 
I just wanted to give my take on this. He's so right about mobile games, free-to-play games, how they get you, uh, how the currency systems work, the the uh, sort of things that they are mentally feeding off. I think this is a really fascinating video. I also think he happens to say some things about Pokemon Unite that are just flat-out wrong, which I think is unfortunate because, again, it's either due to a lack of research or, or a lack of knowledge, or uh, if I was being unfair, it's because it makes a spicier video to say Say that you have to do this when in reality you don't thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed that and if you disagree with me that's fine you can let me know in the comments but let's be cool to each other thank you all goodbye mm -hmm.